We're really excited to be here at Buena Vista Historical Winery tonight for our 2013 Women in Wine panel. This year's panelists include Gina Gallo, Michaela Rodino, and Claudia Schubert. Very excited to have them and moderating them will be Tom Wark with Wark Communications. We are expecting a sellout crowd tonight and they're preparing the room right now. Welcome ladies, women for Wine Sense. The most fun that we have is uh, raising money for these four scholarships that we do. We have uh, four universities that every year get awarded a scholarship for folks that are studying wine. I would like to introduce John Charles Boisse, the man who has brought me back to life and the winery as well. <laughs> Doesn't he look charming for 200 years? <laughs> well, we are absolutely honored to have so many beautiful, charming, irresistible ladies at the winery. Count! Indeed, sir. For those of you who know Tom Wark and read Fermentation Wine Blog know he is the guy to follow. And so I say no more other than to hand the microphone to him and let him take over. Michaela was responsible for raising up and bringing to prominence Domaine Chandon, and St. Supri, two of Napa Valley's most prominent wineries today. And it was under her guidance that they got to that level. And it was because of her work as a CEO and because of the respect that she earned that she also was given a place in the Haas um, School of Business Hall of Fame. So we're happy to have Michaela with us today. There have been so many changes, it's hard to remember them all. I mean, the viticulture, Phylloxera gave us an opportunity to really upgrade the viticulture. We like to look at that as the silver lining of replanting all the vineyards in the 90s. But that was a major leap forward in terms of quality, wine quality. The distribution system has changed remarkably and not for the better, in my view. I always get in trouble when I say things like this, but they can't hurt me anymore because my winery is too small. <laughs> With direct shipping coming to life, the, the small wineries, I think, do have a way to market, and that's good and the distributors will be there for the wineries that they're happy working with and that's fine too but it's it's a pretty radical change and it's certainly been a major legal shift in our industry to, to have direct access to wineries I mean when I first got in the business if you asked almost anybody who their customer was they would say either a distributor or a restaurant or a retailer nobody would say a consumer absolutely nobody and that's been one of the driving things behind my career in the wine business is that I was always focused on consumers and now finally that's all coming to pay off. <laughs> which leads to the next thing which is the internet of course. That has really changed the ball game. Now you don't need to have tremendous resources to go to market. You don't have to build a winery anymore, a bricks and mortar winery, and you don't have to print things and buy ad space. But it has liberated a lot of small wineries to get out there and they can afford to talk to consumers now. And I, these are the sort of the big ones that I can think of right off the top of my head. Claudia Schubert, one does not rise to the position of president of Diageo Chateau and Estates merely on competence. It takes a certain amount of skill and talent to get there. It takes certain skills. It takes a uh, sort of a deep understanding of management. It takes an understanding of politics. It takes a strategic mind. And it, it takes a, uh, a perfect understanding of the American wine marketplace. And this is something that Claudia brings to the table in spades. And one year ago, she was promoted to president of Diageo Chateau and Estates. Yay! Today, Today she guides one of the most important, one of the largest and one of the most innovative wine companies in America. What are the most important trends you see in place right now that are going to impact the wine industry five and ten years down the road to the point where you need to take care of them, you need to pay attention to them because you're running a company that depends on, I think, you understanding them. So I think, Tom, you're, you're right, but I would argue that you have to not only watch the trends if you're a big company, I think you have to watch the trends wherever, you, no matter where you are, because I agree with what Michaela said, it is about the consumer, because the person that votes with their money at the end of the day to buy that bottle of wine, that's all who we're talking to. So I think you have to pay attention no matter where you are. What do I see? You know, you start with the consumer and you look at who's growing up in America right now and who is coming to join us in this alcoholic beverage space and category that we're operating in. And one out of every two consumers growing up is of multicultural background. 
I think that is going to fundamentally change and already has begun to change how consumers are looking at wine or looking at beverages, how they're enjoying themselves, how they're celebrating and how they're fitting wine into their lives. So I think understanding that consumer and how they might incorporate wine into their lives a little differently has to be one of the first and foremost things that this industry has to look at. I think with that then comes different flavors. We've seen it all around in various categories. We certainly see it, we're part of Diageo in our spirits category, the explosion of the flavor culture and consumers just having fun experimenting with different types of cocktails. And I think we're seeing some of that coming into the wine category as well, where some of the old boundaries that wine was fit into are no longer there. So I think it's the consumer, it is the flavor profile, and I think with that, just generally the attitude, I think that's a very positive thing, is opening doors for consumers to fit wine into times, occasions, celebrations that maybe wine would have not played in before, and I think that's a fantastic thing for our industry. She hasn't lived a day of her life when the wine industry was not a part of it. So when we talk about things like it's in our blood or it's in your blood, all you need to do to understand that phrase is look at Gina. From the day she was born, it was all about wine. Today, she is the winemaker for e j Gallo Signature Series. So she has herself both on the production side and on the vineyard side of the world. And I think it's safe to say that given her work and given her position, Gina Gallo is one of the most important and most influential people in the wine industry today. For those who are considering a career in the wine industry or the, for those who are considering continuing a career in the wine industry, what would you say are the very best reasons for doing that? I would say I love it. <laughs> I think, you know, in general, it's so it's amazingly diverse. It's from our soil, California. California is really the epitome of agriculture. Our wine world in California is a huge economic fundamental for the United States. When you really look at the numbers, I mean, the wine industry is amazing and what it is in, in the United States and especially to California in particular. I would say that for one, so it's not a small player. It's huge in the, the need of what it gives. I think also because you have everything from getting your hands dirty to being on the streets to talking to consumers, to understanding what people want, to uh, sensory, you know, on the, uh, on the sensorial side of what do consumers want. So I think the diversity there is so powerful. I think for women in general, it's extremely wonderful because it's, a, it's an amazing balance of all of that.